Popes versus Socialism. The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels was published by a group of German-born revolutionary socialists in London, England, UK on February 21st, 1848. Soon thereafter, Pope Pius IX, whose papacy ran between 1846 and 1878, had this to say about that. You are aware indeed that the goal of this most iniquitous plot is to drive people to overthrow the entire order of human affairs and to draw them over to the wicked theories of this socialism and communism by confusing them with perverted teachings. That was from encyclical Nostis et Nobiscum, December 8, 1849. The Pope who came after him was Pope Leo XIII, whose papacy was from 1878 to 1903. His response to socialism was this, Hence it is clear that the main tenet of socialism, community of goods, must be utterly rejected, since it only injures those whom it would seem meant to benefit is directly contrary to the natural rights of mankind and would introduce confusion and disorder into the commonwealth. The first and most fundamental principle, therefore, if one would undertake to alleviate the condition of the masses, must be the inviolability of private property. From the encyclical Rerum Novarum, May 15, 1891. The following pope was St. Pius X, whose papacy ran from 1903 to 1914. About socialism he states, But stranger still, alarming and saddening at the same time, are the audacity and frivolity of men who call themselves Catholics and dream of reshaping society under such conditions, and of establishing on earth, over and beyond the pale of the Catholic Church, the reign of love and justice. What are they going to produce? A mere verbal and chimerical construction in which we shall see, glowing in a jumble and in seductive confusion, the words liberty, justice, fraternity, love, equality, and human exaltation, all resting upon an ill-understood human dignity, sterile for the end proposed. From the Apostolic Letter, Notre Charge Apostolique, Our Apostolic Mandate, to the French bishops, August 25, 1910, condemning the movement Le Sillon. The Pope that followed him was Benedict XV whose papacy was from 1914 through 1922. About socialism, he stated, the condemnation of socialism should never be forgotten. It is not our intention here to repeat the arguments which clearly expose the errors of socialism and of similar doctrines. Our predecessor, Leo XIII, most wisely did so in truly memorable encyclicals. And you, venerable brethren, will take the greatest care that those grave precepts are never forgotten, but that whenever circumstances call for it, they should be clearly expounded and inculcated in Catholic associations and congresses, in sermons, and in the Catholic press. From encyclical Ad Beatissimi Apostolorum, November 1st, 1914. Number 13. The Pope that followed him was Pope Pius XI, whose papacy ran from 1922 to 1939. About socialism, he stated, Religious socialism, Christian socialism, are contradictory terms. No one can be at the same time a good Catholic and a true socialist. From the encyclical Quadragesimo Anno, 
May 15, 1931, number 111. The Pope after that was Pope Pius XII, whose papacy ran from 1939 to 1958. He stated about socialism the following. The church will fight this battle to the end, for it is a question of supreme values, the dignity of man and the salvation of souls. That was from a radio message to the Katholikentag of Vienna, September 14, 1952, in Discorsi e Radio Messaggi, volume 14, page 314. Earlier in his papacy, in the encyclical Summi Pontificatus, dated October 20th, 1939, number 60, he stated, the state cannot be regarded as being above all. To consider the state as something ultimate to which everything else should be subordinated and directed cannot fail to harm the true and lasting prosperity of nations. He later went on to state in his decree against communism, dated June 1949, it is not licit to publish, promulgate, or read books journals, or leaflets which defend the action or the communist doctrine or to write for them. If Christians declare openly the materialist and anti-Christian doctrine of the communists, and mainly if they defend it or promulgate it, they incur excommunication. The Pope who followed him was Pope John XXIII, whose papacy ran from 1958 to 1963. About socialism, he stated, no Catholic could subscribe even to moderate socialism. The reason is that socialism is founded on a doctrine of human society which is bounded by time and takes no account of any objective other than that of material well-being, since therefore it proposes a form of social organization which aims solely at production, it places too severe a restraint on human liberty, at the same time flouting the true notion of social authority from encyclical Mater et Magistra, May 15th, 1961, number 34. The Pope after that was Pope Paul VI, whose papacy was from 1963 to 1978. About socialism, he stated, too often Christians attracted by socialism tend to idealize it. They refuse to recognize the limitations of the historical socialist movements which remain conditioned by the ideologies from which they originated, from the apostolic letter Octogesima Adveniens, May 14, 1971, number 31. Next in line came Pope John Paul I, whose pontificate ran for 33 days in 1978. Pope John Paul I's personal biographer, Marco Rancali, said of John Paul I, he reiterated the official views of the church in regard to Marxism and Catholicism being incompatible and believed it to be a weapon to disobey the Christian faith. From the unpublished Albino Luciani, Pope John Paul I, The Smiling Pope, Part Two, An interview by Renzo Allegri of Marco Roncalli, author of the first complete critical biography of John Paul I, August 21st, 2012. The Pope who followed him was St. John Paul II, whose papacy was from 1978 to 2005. About socialism, he stated, Socialism considers the individual person simply as an element, a molecule within the social organism, so that the good of the individual is completely subordinated to the functioning of the socio-economic mechanism. Socialism likewise maintains that the good of the individual can be realized without reference to his free choice, to the unique and exclusive responsibility which he exercises in the face of good or evil. Man is thus reduced to a series of social relationships, and the concept of the person as the autonomous subject of moral decision disappears. The very subject whose decisions build the social order. From this mistaken conception of the person there arise both a distortion of law which defines the sphere of the exercise of freedom and an opposition to private property. From his encyclical Centesimus Annus, May 1st, 1991, number 12. The Pope who followed him was Pope Benedict XVI, whose papacy ran from 2005 to 2013. 
about socialism, he stated, the state which would provide everything, absorbing everything into itself, would ultimately become a mere bureaucracy incapable of guaranteeing the very thing which the suffering person, every person, needs, namely, loving personal concern. We do not need a state which regulates and controls everything, but a state which, in accordance with the principle of subsidiarity, generously acknowledges and supports initiatives arising from the different social forces and combines spontaneity with closeness to those in need. In the end, the claim that just social structures would make works of charity superfluous masks a materialist conception of man, the mistaken notion that man can live by bread alone, Matthew 4.4, 4, referring to Deuteronomy 8.3 a conviction that demeans man and ultimately disregards all that is specifically human. From the encyclical Deus Caritas Est, December 25th, 2005, number 28. Please feel free to make copies of this document to disperse to Catholics and non-Catholics alike. Or for a digital copy, please go to popesversussocialism.org. Thank you. This has been a gofishglobal.org presentation. If interested in mobilizing fellow Catholics to do outreach and evangelization, please contact us. God bless you.